understanding of the story. But we are going to watch it. To watch it. Okay. <laughs> Reservation. Yes. Eisner, Peter Eisner. Ah, uh, yes. I've got an early meeting tomorrow, so I'd appreciate it if we weren't disturbed tonight. Here's your key. We can take your bags up to the room. Thank you. Every time I come to the city, I'm reminded of how beautiful it is. Why don't we move to a city? Because I like where we live now. I know you do. 
but cities are just full of excitement. And you're close to everything. Cities are expensive, crowded. You know, I need my space. Look, Peter, that cat is out there in the rain again. What cat? That cat when we pulled in. I want to get that cat. Why? Because it's... I'm sorry. I will come later. I'm going to get that cat. Are you serious? Don't go out there, it's raining out there. I'm going. Anna? I'm going. All right then. Get you something, miss? I I'm just going outside for a second. But it's raining outside. Do you have an umbrella? Be all right. I'm sorry. The doorman sent this up for you. between the husband and the wife. 
in their relationship what is not complete, what is missing. about one of the greatest stories uh, of the 20th century, even if it is a little underappreciated for its simplicity. Uh, the story Cat in the Rain by uh, famous author Ernest Hemingway. Uh, he wrote it in 1925. This was pretty early on in his career. One of the most uh, fascinating things about this story is how it takes something profoundly simple, uh, a woman just wanting a cat, uh, and turns it into a commentary on the marriage between these two people and whether they're ever actually going to be able to be happy. One of the primary elements of discussion in this story is not necessarily the cat or the wife or the husband uh, or even where they are in Italy on vacation, but just simply the question of who is the villain of this story. Uh, there are multiple interpretations of how we can go about determining who is the villain in this story. Uh, not every story necessarily has to have a villain, but a lot of times uh, you are going to get one, and uh, in this story it's a big question. Uh, some people suggest that the husband, in fact, is the bad guy in this story. The thing that would make him the bad guy is relatively self-evident upon reading the story. Uh, he doesn't really seem to, you know, give much of a darn about whether his wife is happy. Uh, he ignores her. He just sits there and reads through the whole story. Even the spot early on when it seems like he's going to be helpful by saying that, no, I'll do it. I'll go down and get the cat. He doesn't actually uh, get up. It says, the husband went on reading, lying propped up with the two pillows at the foot of the bed. Uh, so even when he seems to offer to help his wife, he doesn't actually make any effort to do so. Uh, additionally, uh, later on in the story, it could be claimed that he is somewhat controlling uh, because the wife very adamantly uh, requests that she wants silver, uh, she wants uh, different things in her life, that she wants her hair to be long, and he suggests that he doesn't really want her to change her hair, uh, saying basically that he likes it the way, he, the way it is. 
Uh, some people have taken this to be uh, that he is in control of his wife and doesn't give her the adequate freedom needed uh, to recognize happiness in her own life, and that's why she's so displeased and wants the cat. Um, another thing against him is that the harshest thing said in the story is shut up. Uh, because he does tell his wife to shut up uh, later on in the story when he says shut up and find something to read uh, when she's busy requesting that he provide her with all sorts of other material possessions. So these are the things against the husband that make it seem like he's the one uh, who's the antagonist in the story. He's the one who's causing the problems. Conversely, there are those who argue that it is the wife who is actually the true villain of this story. Uh, whereas she's the one who's clearly unhappy with the events of the day and perhaps the events of her greater life, uh, she does tend to whine about it an awful lot and that maybe she is really the problem. That her husband, he's able to be here on a rainy day and find satisfaction just from reading a book, whereas she, you know, isn't able to be self-contained. Uh, she's not able to just be happy sitting there reading or being thoughtful or even just watching uh, the beautiful rainstorm outside. Uh, she needs things. She wants a cat uh, to make her life more complete. Uh, she wants all sorts of other things. She wants to grow her hair out. She wants her hair clipped uh, you know, in a, in a different way. She also wants to have uh, the ability to have various silver and other things. She wants to eat at her own table. She wants candles. She wants to be spring. She wants to brush her hair out. She wants a kitty. She wants new clothes. All of these things are symbolic of her material desire. And th this sort of materialism within herself uh, is the true uh, evil of the story. Uh, so that would make her the villain, not the husband. Uh, another thing about uh, this is how she represents the difference in a person between internal and external happiness. That's a major theme of this piece of work because she's not able to necessarily be happy just within herself. She does need to seek external means to find happiness. External means would include things like a cat or, you know, just having her hair cut differently. It's just the idea that she's not necessarily able to be happy on her own. Right. Another thing that would make the wife a possible villain in this story is the fact that she seems to fetishize uh, the padrone, the, the doorman of the story who takes care of her, uh, provides for her, he likes the way he looks, he likes how uh, he makes her feel small. All of these are the types of things that maybe make it seem that she's not as faithful to her husband as maybe she should be. Uh, in mind. Not that she's necessarily acting on this lust or feeling that she has for another man, but just the fact that it is there and the fact that she finds this tenderness in this other man uh, shows that maybe she doesn't have her eye uh, on the ball of her own relationship. So those are a couple of the primary issues in this story. Uh, other things that provide some primary things are the doorman himself. Is he actually trying to flirt uh, with the wife, or perhaps more likely, he's just doing his job. So that's another thing. Another sort of extremely controversial uh, issue in regards to this story is the nature of the husband. Uh, he does seem to be somebody who can find happiness internally uh, as opposed to his wife, but there is the curious issue that his wife wants to grow her hair out, a sign of femininity, and he doesn't want that. You know, for example, uh, the wife says, uh, I get so tired of it about her hair. She, uh, she says, don't you think it would be a good idea if I let my hair grow out? She asked, looking at her profile again. George looked up and saw the back of her neck clip close like a boy's. I like it the way he is, he says. I get so tired of it, she said. I get so tired of looking at a boy. George shifted his position in the bed. He hadn't looked away from her since she started to speak. You look pretty darn nice, he said. Some critics over the last 90 plus years have suggested that this is proof that the husband in the story, in fact, isn't terribly interested in women after all. Uh, this is a very debatable uh, piece of criticism, and there might be nothing to it, 
Uh, but it has been suggested that perhaps George in the story doesn't seem attentive to his wife's needs because he isn't very interested in women. This is just the type of thing that's possible out there when you look at uh, a text very closely and you try to analyze it, you try to see what's there. Another big thing in this story is that Hemingway potentially was criticizing uh, the American. Good night.